coming back. You hear that, Jasmine? It was gone for a minute. That mean I got to take it easy around here because I ain't trying to be raspy during my October 20th wine gossip and comedy show. Speaking of the October 20th wine gossip and comedy show, who got their tickets? I need to see them ticket emojis in the chat. Red now, nah, not right now, nah, red now. Nah. In the words of my grandmama, let me see them, throw them up. Okay, especially if you got tickets to both events. We ain't got but like 40 left. We gonna shut down the other 40 for my daddy and them to be up in there embarrassing me. And, and now one of y'all better not be trying to go home with my daddies either. And I said daddies on purpose. I know y'all nasty. I saw how you were looking at them Osendario brothers. Y'all didn't care if they was gay or straight. Y'all didn't care. You just saw you just saw some dark, some chocolate, some white teeth, some muscles and stuff. And you, 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 I, there was a few of them masturbating and stuff through, in the chat. I said, you can't make this up. Hit the wine glass, too, if you saw that Osendario's interview. <laughs> I was the only one clothed. <laughs> On TashaGayLaw.com. Y'all been having fun. I have. I've been tired, but I've been having some fun. Sorry for being late tonight. I was asleep before the show. I wasn't, I didn't sleep in. I was just asleep. I told Jazz, I said, move it to 8 o'clock. I, I, it's the only way it's going to get done tonight, okay? Shout out to Jasmine for working hard. Jasmine be here all day working, okay? While y'all waiting on this wine and stuff, I ain't gonna do, I ain't gonna do Jasmine like that. Cause Jasmine, she worked too hard to put this show together. And how dare I cancel on her? So it ain't got nothing to do with y'all. It's got everything to do with her working, okay, from 11 a.m. in the morning, all right, until the time the show starts, and then she's the last to leave. Y'all make sure y'all show some love for Jasmine, aka Jazzy Fizzle Productions of my Nizzle. We, see, we need some music. You know what I'm saying? We need some bomb bomb. <laughs> and don't forget, y'all, y'all better get them tickets, okay? We're two weeks away from the venue, okay? We ready. We already packed out. You know, whether you decide to buy the last few or not, it's already packed out anyway, okay? Them, them Latinas are finna make a lot of ceviche that night, okay? And margaritas. Mm-hmm. All of that tacos, you know, we in the Latina community, and that's where Miami mainly is, okay? I can't wait to see all y'all flying in from all over the world for Why No Weekend, because we about to turn up, and you can turn your phones on after the show, after the show, okay? Nobody giving away my location. <laughs> so we got security for it. All right, listen, full show for y'all, okay? I ain't going to make y'all wait no more. Definitely got Britney Spears. Young lady done got locked up in uh, Dubai for just touching somebody okay y'all gonna learn to read the rules before you before you leave definitely gonna be talking about tia maori because I, I i'm like did i lie you know me and her the same age she could have called me and had a conversation and i could have told her how to proceed okay not burn the house down sierra she settled she settled mm -hmm. okay we're gonna be discussing that bow wow <sighs> Bow Wow probably needs to be quiet before he bees on the Me Too movement list next, okay? Because this video he just put out didn't do him any justice. And that little girl that he was trying to shut down, it really gave validity to her story. Also going to be talking about 21 Savage. Drake been spilling a lot of wine on his album, okay? And you know we keeps up. When it's wine, that's the only way we're going to promote it. Otherwise, they got to pay me separately to promote that album. But since he is spilling the wine that I need, that we need, we're going to give Drake, okay, with the hair bows in his hair, some, some clout today, all right? Also going to be talking about Beyonce and Jay-Z, y'all dragging the little girl. Y'all got to remember that was a little girl, okay? Also... <laughs> Look at Jasmine. Jasmine face me everything. She'll be like, well. Azalea Banks coming for Naomi Campbell. Tristan. Am I saying his name right now, Tristan? Tristan, okay. He's still begging for Chloe. He wanted to come back. She ain't left. Shit. They live across the street from each other. Kim Kardashian also going to be talking about, we got some pictures. I hate to do it to Nene, but I tried to tell her we got some pictures. I'm sure she's seen them. 
the, the young lady that sent me the pictures, I made her take them down. I said, we're going to debut them, and we're going to add you as a collaborator. Thank you, for your, thank you for your business. Thank you for your service. Thank you for serving us some exclusive wine here tonight, okay? And so, yes. Uh, also going to be discussing uh, ooh, 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 a YouTuber, okay? And I was just surprised this, this wine didn't go viral, but gladly, Jasmine caught it, okay? Uh, one of our fellow YouTubers, all right? Uh, we'll, we'll give her a shout-out here later once you see the content. Um, um, gave us some wine on Miss Tamar Braxton. You know, we're going to be discussing that. All of that and more, okay, coming up uh, during this section of the show. I hope you guys are ready for Fuckery Friday. But in the meantime, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass to hold that thought. Let's go. Hey, check this out. Kids go home tomorrow. House finna be quiet as a bitch, man. So f Boosty badass is back, man. All gold pool party. All gold piss pool party. And I mean it, man. This third. We finna turn up, man. F all that, man. I gotta enjoy my motherfucking life, man. All gold piss pool party. I'm about to be all up in the gold. for a second because at times like this we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. about in the comments i don't never like spend enough time with y'all because i be so dead focused on what's going on okay like big time oh the chats is going fast y'all y'all gonna make me put on my reading glasses you know i'm getting up there in age everybody like did you see boosie he said he liked your skin yeah it was just on the channel that was our shout out that was an organic shout out see most companies will make people do a um a drop we didn't even have to do that. He just decided to drop it on his live, and we took it. It was free. We didn't have to pay for it, and it was organic, okay? So that's how we got the word out. Shout out to Boosie, my brother, because we sure do look like brother and sister. If you see my brother, you're going to be like, he look like Boosie. I know. I know. So listen, we all from Florida. Yeah, I'm back drinking. I need it, y'all. I need it, okay? I'll tell you what I'm drinking a little later. You guys ready? All right. To all, wait a minute. To all of you, you black women that have been traveling to Dubai, 
you know, wearing things that you normally wear in Western countries over there in African or Middle Eastern countries. And before you travel, because you done seen somebody on TikTok upload a video in Dubai that looks good. It seems like it's fun, but they forget to tell you that there are rules and regulations to how you're supposed to act and conduct yourself when you go into said countries. Y'all better ask Elizabeth here what the hell going on. 21 years old. Was just sentenced to one year. Now, she's a New York, uh, New York City college student. Sent sentenced to one year in a Dubai prison for touching airport security guard's arm. Now, had she would have touched one of them sheiks over there and maybe put just a little pee on them, she wouldn't be in this situation right now. Had she would have just taken a shit, she wouldn't be locked up. You know, they love for black women to just defecate and do everything just, just utterly disgusting and beneath them, on them, so they can go home and kiss their wife with the same mouth, you know, her pee, what it was supposed to be, and her poop would have went in. But she's college educated was supposed to be college educated. And one thing I learned going to, what was it, Stratford University? It was one of them uh, them universities on the side of the road that was in a, um, it was in a, a shopping plaza, right next to Planet Fitness. And I went at night, okay? And I took some international marketing courses. And I got to tell you, for the price of one course of $5,200, you know? Yeah, Biden reversing a lot of that stuff right now. University of Phoenix and all those colleges that charge us five, ten thousand. 10000 This was for the people that couldn't that couldn't get into regular colleges or couldn't afford to uh, 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 pay for regular universities. You know, they took advantage and offered an afterpay option, you know, a care credit option to go to these universities. And so I took advantage of that, you know, and, and went and took some business courses and international business courses. And one thing that I learned... You know, from that and from dating, you know, and being married uh, to someone who's a foreigner in a Muslim-dominated country, mm -hmm. there's just certain things that a woman has to do. And I know a lot of y'all be laughing at me when y'all see me uploading my photos to Instagram in a hijab. Yeah. And you're like, you're not Muslim. Today I am. Because I'm not going to jail for none of y'all. I'm not getting stoned. I'm not getting beat and condemned by the family. I'm going to be right there just like this. Throwing out the carpet. Time to pray. Whew, time to pray. Okay? That's what, that's what I do. That's what you have to do. Okay? Especially if you want to be well-traveled and, you know, you want to you, you, you wanna go into some countries and learn some things. You have to abide by the culture. But she didn't get the memo at all. And now she's in jail for one year. Okay? Now, Elizabeth Polanco uh, de, de Los Santos. Damn. She black and Hispanic. She Afro-Latino. Uh, it says it in the name. A 21-year-old student enrolled at Lehman College in the Bronx received her sentencing on Monday. Is my volume up good? Because, you know, I'm going to be talking kind of low till we get... Okay. This came after she endured almost three months in a situation of confinement in Dubai due to a travel ban imposed on her, as, re as reported by the advocacy organization detained in Dubai. According to the New York Post, the New York City College student was sentenced to one year behind bars by the United Arab Emirates for allegedly assaulting and insulting an airport security guard during a flight connection in Dubai over the summer, which means she was passing through. And she passed right by the jail, and she went past it. And, and just like in the Monopoly game, they tell you, go back to jail. Okay? Now, while passing through security, Dubai airport staff requested that Los Santos remove a waste compressor. Child, she went over there with a waste trainer on. And she, uh, she was required to wear after a recent surgery. <clears throat> this is getting worse and worse by the minute. Now, while passing through security, Dubai airport staff requested that Los Santos remove a waste compressor. Um, okay, hold on, hold on. I read that twice. Give me a second. 
Shown to a private booth, female staff members removed the compressor, but Los Santos' mother told detained, told detained in Dubai they were rough and hurt her daughter's still healing surgery scars, okay? They also laughed at her, and when she asked for help to put the complicated garment back on, they refused. I was feeling uncomfortable and afraid. I felt really violated, Los Santos said. The compressor had many, many pins, and you need to stretch the... We know what a waist, waist trainer in Faha do. I don't need to know all of that, okay? But they don't know. Hold on. They said she's out now? Well, how'd she get out? Well, she got a suspended sentence? Moral of the story is, you y'all need to read before you see a TikTok video or even take a cheap flight. Because them cheap flights will divert you into countries that you're not necessarily prepared for. And you may have some cartridges, some oil cartridges that just have just a little bit of THC remaining. And your ass going to be Brittany the ground that keep messing around out here, okay? Now, I'm glad she's home. I really am. But where did she go to have to pass through Dubai to get, where she go, Turkey? To get the, the, the BBL? Because I know they was going to make her lay down, face down on that ground, okay, in that cell to recover from her BBL. Mm, that's what she was going to be doing. Happy that she's home, if she's home. We just got this today, so, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Moving on. Ooh, that wine feel good. I don't even know how to function. My God, I got a problem. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Oh, this wine. Oh, Britney Spears? Okay. I didn't know. She looked like a daddy by the mouth. They look the same. I read that. Yeah. Okay, and shout out to the master stylist for hooking my hair up. Finally, <laughs> she took off work. She did that. Okay, now, um, Britney Spears' dad is is laid up. I guess fighting for his life. He has a a, a very severe illness, uh, and he's in the hospital. He's seventy one years old, and uh, Britney Spears said, "Get somebody else to do it." So she, she was seen while her dad is tr fighting for his life, boarding a helicopter to go on vacation uh, to a resort on a private island that goes for about $12,000 a night. Now, I'm sure her daddy hospital bills are just a little bit cheaper than that, but the family have been trying to reach out to Brittany, and Brittany said, fuck off, I got to go. And I got to tell I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I'm sure he's using her funds, you know, to care, you know, to pay for his hospital bills and stuff. So he's straight. What she need to be there for? And if you ask me, I think that he's manipulated her so long that she probably don't even believe that he's sick. Because that's probably a way that he's, he probably went to catch COVID on purpose just so he can get the message back to his daughter. Please come see me, your daddy dying. She said, die. I, Brittany said, I don't believe it until the casket is in the ground. I am done with you lying to me and locking me up in my room. That man said, as long as you live in this house, you will lock no doors. The only person that would lock doors is me when I put you in your closet. Remember flowers in the attic? That's what her family gave me, flowers in the attic. Okay, I'm surprised she ain't. She ain't used them knives that she was dancing with on the people. That's why they was worried. I said, you really, your daddy really wants you to come see him right now while you online dancing with knives. <laughs> okay. But um, we just want to wish Brittany a happy vacation, and we hope that her legs are up. Okay? Her legs are spread wide open. Uh, during her vacation mode, because see, that's what happens when you when you keep a child locked down. That's what preachers uh, uh, do to their children, okay? They keep them locked down, and then when they get outside, they don't know what to do. The hell with you, okay? Now, once they get this out of their system, she'll return right back, but I'm sure you'll be returned to the grave before she even get a chance to say, you know what, Dad? Wasn't nothing out here in these streets. <laughs> but go, Brittany, go. I thought that shit was funny. That man said he about to die. She said, no, you're not. Die first. Die. <laughs> Let me see. I dare you. Let me see. You dead? No, you're not. <laughs> okay. I'm out. Eat that hospital jello. <laughs> Moving on. Kim and Croy. Now, this is very urban. 
I thought it was very urban. So apparently she called the police on Croy a couple nights ago. TMZ reported. And she called the police because she said she didn't feel safe. Now, they're in a North Georgia Hills home in an estate in a gated community. Um, she has had ample opportunity to leave. She's filed for divorce, then took back the divorce, and then he filed for divorce, and then she took back for the divorce, and then she put on a little short dress and took him to church, said it was going to work things out, and just recently took back the divorce because she said they were having a lot of sex. And so one night, I guess, I don't know what Croy found, he took both of her phones. According to the police report, this ain't me. He took both of her phones, ran into the room with both of her phones, and locked himself in the bedroom. Now, apparently the children didn't hear the fighting. I don't believe that shit. We know what it's like in an urban household. Okay, and we've seen cops. This happened in a lot of white trash households, too. A.K.A. Cracker. Okay? We know that children hear everything. Contrary to what we think. Because if they was anything like me when my mom and daddy was fighting, I just put my, you know, the covers over my head and I was still listening. Acting like I was asleep. I heard every damn thing. You fuck that bitch on your job? Mama, well, who the bitch? Let me be quiet. <laughs> who the bitch? <laughs> oh, I was nosy as hell, man. I used to get out the room and go sit and like literally open up the door and crack it. And, and go sit and, and listen to them argue. And I'm like, ooh, I was always nosy when it came to the wine. It's just in my blood. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I know all my mama busy. Because she be like, nah, I be telling her so. She be like, how you know that? I'm like, daddy was, you know, I remember daddy was chasing you around outside because he said you were sleeping with his first sergeant. She said, what? I said, yeah, I remember because when he, he, you ran, you came home and said you was working late. He said, ain't no way you was working late if the commissary closed at 10. But you came home at one and said that you had to do inventory. And he had heard that you had left the commissary with his first sergeant. And then I saw him chasing you around the playground outside of the community when we was in Kaiserslautern, okay, Germany. And they had the little military housing and she was running around in a circle. And I was like, oh, shit. But when she ran back to the house, I ran and got in the bed and put the covers over my head like I was asleep, like I ain't see shit. She said, oh, you nosy. Lynette gonna call me in a minute. <laughs> But they were both, do you know what I'm saying? They were both young, you know, 21, 22, three kids. You know what I'm saying? You're bound to get some of that. You know what I'm saying? So listen, shout out to my mama and my daddy. I was, I'm going to see them in two weeks, Lord Jesus. I'm just going to have to set them outside when they become part of the commentary on that stage, okay? Make sure you get your tickets. Wine, gossip, comedy, October 20th. But back to Croy, okay? Croy had to explain himself to the police. Now, I, um... I know in that moment, Croy probably felt like a black man. The moment a white woman called from a North Georgia Hills home in an estate that she didn't feel safe. I know them police, when they got there, they could have swore this man was black and a ball player. Turns out he was white and a ball player. So you know what they told her? Do you know what they told Croy? They said, listen, just give her back her phones. Okay? Go in the room, lay down. Go to sleep. She can sleep in the guest room. And we're going to dead that right there. But had he would have been a nigga. Croy would be reporting live right now, giving statements with his lawyer from the jailhouse, okay, in Gwinnett County. We already know how that would go. She was trying to get him locked up. I, it's probably some paperwork in there she's trying to get her hands on. She can't say to do it, you know what I'm saying? Trying to relinquish ownership, tra transfer some, some shit to him so she ain't monetarily responsible for it. Then she gonna file the divorce to say, uh-uh, I wasn't never on that. I already know what she on. She trying to tell me we having lots of sex. She trying to give him pussy, hoping that it keep his mind, you know, clouded and shit like that. Cross said like, hell no. He took them phones and ran in the room. <laughs> said, bitch, come get them. Couldn't, 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 couldn't knock down them doors. The wig could, but she couldn't. Moving on. I'm surprised Real Housewives ain't coming to get that wine. I'll come get it. I'll come get it. I'll put some cameras in the house. <sighs> this is real irritating. See, this is what I don't understand, right? Because now y'all all in my DM. And I can't, I can't do too much walking today because my dress walking up. 
Now I ain't trying to have Mr. Sheck shut down the live, so I'm going to try to do my best to give this commentary to the best of Tasha K's ability that I can. But I have to get up for this mm -hmm. because y'all asses, see, y'all, I know y'all are hopeful in, in love. And women, you know, because y'all watch too many movies and shit, y'all think there's a real knight in shining armor. It's not. It's just a black man. They saving white women, Asian women, black women, and everybody. That's the knight in shining armor, okay? That's who gonna come save you. Now, Corey, me, you know, a lot of people say I'm male identified. No, 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 I'm family identified. Family. Has nothing to do with the man or the woman. But I told Tia that there was nothing outside at all. When she decided to divorce her husband for no reason, because she wanted to cheat but didn't want to cheat. But let's not act like we didn't know what it was. She got bored. She was like, I'm, I'm 40. There's got to be something better outside. But then guess what? Go it, ahead, Tia. How hard is it in the dating Ooh, world now? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like out there for for, Do for we have a single one? Shot of tequila? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I've been single for five years, yeah. so huh? I don't know what this world is like out there. But I know, it, but from what I see and from what I hear, it is tough. It is very tough, mm -hmm. and it is exhausting. <laughs> like, it's exhausting. I'm gonna throw the towel in. <laughs> Someone had told me and I was I, I, I wanted to be like, no, I, I disagree with you and I don't want to believe it. My last relationship when dating was, you know, when I was, you know, dating this person, it was beautiful. It was amazing. It was wonderful. There was courting that was, you know, involved. Um, and I was saying how I feel like that's no longer, you know, uh, present meaning like people just don't court each other anymore and this person was like well you know that's just that's old news like people people just don't do that anymore there's just this whole new way of doing things and I'm like you mentioned tradition you know and I think that's where it kind of needs to go back to you know where you know a man is um courting a woman and and showing her you know how much he appreciates her and wants her and loves her or wants to be with her, they have this mentality right off the bat that there is someone else. Do you know what I mean? Like there, there could be someone else. That is it there, that they're the prize? Yes. Yes. We talking deep here. Yes. We about to get into it. Oh my God, that the, that the man is the prize. The man is the prize. Yes. I'm talking loud. Yes. Also, it seems as if men are now just looking at women as objects. Oh. Things are so, um, it's like instant gratification. You know what I mean? They just want something like quick, quick and easy and now. Now, y'all didn't send Tia my show to let her know how these men really is outside today. I'm shocked. And I'm going to blame y'all for this because when I said something and y'all was just like, well, maybe she just wants something new. You don't know what that man is doing behind the scenes. Being a man. Being a damn man. A man that didn't want to let his wife go. Corey did not want to sign those papers. Courtney Corey said, take your ass in the guest room and lay down. She said, no, I need a new me. And who leaves one nigga to immediately go find another one? This girl ain't even been divorced six weeks. Six weeks. And now she already outside looking for what her husband gave her and still gave her up until she got married, but she thought somebody was going to give it to her. But you ain't seen who raising these men? You you are not everybody's childhood crush anymore. You have gray eyebrows. <laughs> gray roots. Tia, those days are over. I know you felt like maybe you moved a little too fast. But girl, just like you moved a little too fast during your 20s, you moved a little too fast divorcing Court and Corey. Because those days are over with. And now... 
I, I just don't understand. I was like, how she leave one relationship to go find another one? Like, it was just like it was in the 90s. No, go home, Roger! <laughs> Take your ass to the house. I talked to Corey. Corey waiting on your ass to come right back to the house. I'm glad that another man ain't hit you yet. All you wanted was to try something new. When you, when you married that long, all you got to do is ask your husband, listen, I love you. And she said she loved him. I love you. I want to be with you. But I'm really, really itching to see what it's like to be with somebody else. That's all she wanted. She wanted to see what else was out there if she made the right decision. But for you to take your husband through that, only for you to realize, uh, uh, well, maybe that don't exist no more. It does, bitch, because you had it. Not Corey going to be courting somebody else if he ain't already courting somebody else. If I was you, I would hurry up and get your ass back to the house. Can you annul a divorce? You can't annul a divorce? Well, maybe they can get remarried again. Okay? Tia, it's not like, go home, Roger. We're done. Let me see the comments. Oh, Jesus. Every Friday in our office, they cut the damn air off in this motherfucker. Now, I know we don't pay that much, but shit. You know, talking about Corey looks sad, boring, and depressed. That's what all men are. No, the only fun ones are the ones that cheat. No, 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 let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Go, 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 go. Let, put, it, put it back up. Put it back up. Put it. Let's talk about it. Let's really talk about it. Because the problem is everybody, and I get this during my happy hours on Monday. Y'all be like, oh, my God, my husband's boring. He's this. He doesn't plan dinners. Well, do you have children? Is he working? Is he tired? Did you ever figure out, like, what's going on with him instead of you thinking of you? Women think shit is supposed to be A-plus roses. Send me flowers on a bad day, on a good day. Guess what I'm thinking? Please, you know, cook for me this day. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm sure there were times that your husband wanted you to do shit for him and you didn't, you couldn't read his mind and couldn't do it. But women are always thinking of some shit that they can't obtain on their own. And then once they go chasing it and realize that it's just a fantasy that Hollywood put, on, put in your damn head, you would know that because you've been putting fantasies in motherfuckers' heads since we was a kid. Yes, when be out here talking about, oh, look, I'm looking for a man that I can call my own, that I can court, even though I have a man at the house that I don't want to try to grow with, that I don't want to try to educate, that I don't want to try to, it's the same as, oh, he asked me to marry him, right? He asked me to marry him, but when are we going to get married? It's five years from now. When you plan a wedding? When do men plan weddings? There's just some women that just really think that life is just supposed to be all roses like they see in movies and the shit don't work like that. Men are men. So if they boring, I'm old school. They boring. They at the house. Always going to sleep at 9 o'clock. I would rather know his schedule than him splitting his schedule with another bitch. Don't play with me. If he ain't being yet. Okay? And he paying the bill. And the sex may not be great all the time, but when he do hit it, and it, it, if it's that wasn't my hitting it good because life gets in the way, and there ain't no other bitches knocking on your door looking for him, and you ain't got to look for him at night, there's your man. There's the court in, Tia. But you just really wanted to get out here and get some side nigga. You should have got that and he would have forgave you. He, he would have did it, okay? He ain't gonna let you go. He love you. He know. He know what's out there. Shit. He probably don't hit somebody. You don't even know about it. Come on now. Moving on. Oh, Jesus. They about to sweat out my damn haircut. Hold on. Jesus. Keisha gonna kill me. These curls got the last till Sunday. I'm shooting a documentary. Shit. They got the last. 
All right. I want y'all seeing up my little dress now. <laughs> but y'all don't like me. I'm old school. You know what I'm saying? I believe in working with what you got. Don't throw it away. If it ain't nothing wrong with it, don't throw it away. Why break something? You know, why fix something if it ain't broken? All right. Up next. Speaking of settling. We all knew. Y'all y'all been saying I've been hating on Sierra. Oh, gee, she's changed. No, she hasn't. I'm just trying to figure out how long she been married to Russell, Russell Wilson. Miss, huh? Mr. Will! She has four babies in. Four babies in. Why are you still doing interviews about your 20, 20, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So seven years in. That's usually when marriages start to break down. And they go through a bad three-year period from seven to ten. Happens all the time. And then whether the, the, the way you respond during those three years between seven and ten years determines whether or not you're going to make it to 15 or 20. There's phases to this shit. I'm trying to figure out why are you with child? And why are you doing interviews talking about what your baby daddy did or didn't do? Listen. Are Around the time that you met Russell, you were going through a really public and what looked like painful breakup. Mm -hmm. And I think about like leaving a relationship is so hard to make that decision, especially I'm assuming as you when you have a child. How did you know for yourself it was time to leave? Oh, my goodness. When you know you're supposed to make a make a super defined decision in your life, you know it from like the head to your feet, from your feet to your head and your soul and your body, you know it. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like your taste buds change, right? You have a taste bud for a certain kind of thing and then the taste buds just go. <sighs> you gotta sometimes also look in the mirror and reflect on yourself too, right? Like, okay, what are the things that I could be doing differently in my life? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what's a part of what I'm, I'm looking for a change, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of define everything about making changes in your life that mm -hmm. are very critical. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've talked about it before, obviously, when you have a child, it's very important to me. Like now it's no time to play around. Like the whole like experimentation <laughs> kind of phase is out the door. It's like, I am now responsible for another life, right? So what am I doing? Like, how am I? Now, there was more to this. Hold on for a second, okay? We didn't want to just take the girl's content like that, um, you know, because we only allowed to use just a certain amount of it, you know, before it becomes a copyright infringement. So we have to follow the guidelines here. But let me tell you something. Um, in this situation, there was more to it, okay? Now, according to SandraRose.com, she said that, you know, here's the thing. She said her taste buds changed. You, you heard that, right? Her taste buds changed, right? Mm. I no longer, you know, after the baby, you know, I can't eat pineapples. So I, I'm forced to eat just blueberries now because I have a pineapple allergy. This is me for real. Okay, so your taste buds change. See, I'm not, I, I still love pineapples. Right? But there's something that just, it, it doesn't, my tongue starts itching, my throat swells up, so I can't do it. It's, it's, that's how future is, you know? He tastes good, but there are side effects to that okay <laughs> certain allergic reactions to the vagina especially when you say and and mentally okay there's a lot of things going on emotionally then you have a baby okay but then when you say that um he was cheating even while y'all were engaged before you were engaged he was cheating during the engagement you were treated and while you, he was cheating and while you were planning the wedding he was cheating. That's not your taste buds changing. You just developed an allergy that you didn't want to something that you really liked. And why is it that seven years into your relationship with a man who has propped you up and courted you in the best way, their future is no different than you dating Bow Wow or any other person that you got in the industry. That is just your baby daddy, and his name would never come out of my mouth as long as I have a man like this bowing before me every day. I would never, ever give this man validity. She gave future things that she made Russell work for. 
like pussy. Gave him pussy. All the pussy he wanted. He had her pussy and everybody else's pussy even while he was engaged. Future had it all. He had the future. But Russell had to wait. Why the good guy got to wait? And why does he still, even though this man is looking at somebody else's child every day and has to say this man's name every day, Future, why are you sitting your pregnant ass in an interview with my baby talking about your taste buds change? It wasn't that you wanted your taste buds to change, because had he would have stopped cheating, you would have married Future. But Future say he for everybody. He's the future. Take it or leave it, bitch. And you left. And you went. And it sounds like in this interview, you're settling. Play it one more time. Around the time that you met Russell, you were going through a really public and what looked like painful breakup. Mm -hmm. And I think about like leaving a relationship is so hard to make that decision, especially I'm assuming as you when you have a child. How did you know for yourself it was time to leave? Oh my goodness. When you know you're supposed to make a make a super defined decision in your life, you know it from like the head to your feet, from your feet to your head and your soul and your body, you know it. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like your taste buds change, right? You have a taste bud for a certain kind of thing and then the taste buds just go. <sighs> you gotta sometimes also look in the mirror and reflect on yourself too, right? Like, okay, what are the things that I could be doing differently in my life or mm -hmm. you know what's a part of what I'm, I'm looking for a change but what does that mean mm -hmm. so you have to kind of define everything about making changes in your life that mm -hmm. are very critical mm -hmm. and you know I've talked about before obviously when you have a child it's very important to me like now it's no time to play around like the whole like experimentation <laughs> kind of phase is out the door it's like I am now responsible for another life right so what am I doing like how am I and for those of y'all saying that the interviewer asked, let me tell you how these high profile interviews work. Cause that's the reason why we don't take them. They want to control the interview. So they, if you, you have to submit questions to them or they have to vet and they have to vet the questions. So Sierra being at the level that she's at, her PR firm set this up, right? And so there are certain questions that you're not going to be allowed to ask unless it's approved. And I just don't understand what is so relevant about Future after he just dished your husband in a song. And that answer didn't give that, oh, you know, <clears throat> I left Future. No, Future left you. And he did leave you. Even up to the point where you was about to, you planning a wedding and had to cancel the damn wedding a few weeks before because he left you. He was with somebody else. Then you came out making songs about him while you was with this man. There's just no way. Listen, when you over somebody, you let it go. But she went into a relationship with trauma and a baby, and Russell is still trying to fix that. And they on baby number four. But y'all, you know, there's some people that just don't get it. Because I guarantee you, if the shoe was on the other foot, and you were Sierra, and you had this good man, but your baby daddy treated you like shit, didn't court you, didn't do nothing, only proposed to you for followers, okay? And that man sat down and said, and answered a question while you seven years in about his ex, and what made him leave, even though he didn't want to leave, y'all would be losing y'all motherfucking mind around here. Y'all, see, that's the problem with women. Y'all don't want to be honest. Ain't no way Shaq finna sit up and do an interview about no ex. She's an ex for a reason. Why are we talking about her? That was seven years ago. And that's why I don't talk about mine. You will never, ever hear me mention any of them niggas' names. What for? The only one that matters when I was, when I was baptized and reborn again was Shaq. And until then, that's good. That's how it's going to be as such. Y'all got to stop that, bringing all that into that. I mean, he already got to call the baby future and worry about this man going to take out his damn daddy after he done put all this into him. Is he still going to wind up like his daddy? He ain't got to worry about that shit. Man, no. He, Russell doing too much to be disrespected like this. See, I need to sit her ass at the house and just be with baby. Be with child. You don't have to say nothing no more. 
The actions of this man speak everything. Moving on. Do we need a break? Okay. Speaking of exes, Bow Wow. I said, Bow Wow better be careful for he getting me too out here, okay? These light-skinned women got pulled. It take dark skin women some years. See how long it took dark skin women to get uh, uh, R. Kelly in jail? But soon as there was a light skinned one and their parents were light skinned, they finally sat down and it was some white girls too and some Latino girls. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not supposed to be our girls. Mm mm. Only the dark ones, the ones we can't see. Because they dark. <laughs> Bye, Wild better be careful. Now, uh, I don't know who this ex video vixen is, okay, that came out and did an interview. But what gave the interview validity, and this is what, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you where he messed up at, okay? But she came out basically alleging that Bow Wow, you know, wanted to put her in a video for some ass. She said she didn't have no ass to give, and he took her out of the video. And then another artist picked her up, and then Bow Wow responded, watch what she had to say. Like. He hazed me in the beginning. We were both signed to Sony Urban. Yeah. He saw my poster at, in the building in New York City, and he was like, I want this girl in my music video for mm -hmm. shorty like mine. He was like, hey, I want to like invite you to yeah. be my lead girl. And I was like, oh my God, I would love to. So my team flew me out to LA. Mm -hmm. We had a whole team meeting. He showed up all like, what's up? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. no, oh, he was putting on. And then he asked me like, oh, you want to come by the hotel? Da, da, da. Yeah. And I'm like, no. The day of, I show up. Angela Simmons has a trailer. Keisha Chante has a trailer, and I'm like, okay. So I go into my trailer, my team shows up, we have bad news. What? Bow doesn't want you to be the lead girl of Shorty Like Mine anymore. Bow Wow. He brought in Angela Simmons. But what he, I didn't realize is that Chris Brown's trailer was yeah. there, and he was there. He came, knocked at the door, and we were friends, we met when we were yeah. young. And he was like, what's going on? I'm like, Bow's trying to kick me out of this video. He's yeah. like, well, you'll be my lead girl then. We don't need Bow. So then we had a little rivalry. So we shoot the video, Bow gave me attitude the entire time. Now, we could have left it at that, right? Because it would have been ultimately her word against his no word. But when she makes allegations that, you know, you basically were trading video shoots and leave video shoots in return for some pussy, and then when you didn't get the pussy, you went elsewhere. And then you come out thinking that you cleared it up, but you only gave her story more validity when you added these details. See, y'all got to listen like I'd be listening. I should have been a lawyer. Let's go. Smashed her, right? Because she know, like, I know I have so much shit on her. And then I wake up, and then I see some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, just straight bullshit that, first and foremost, I just spoke to Keisha two days ago. I speak to Keisha all the time. All the time, right? And I'm not here to, I'm not going to go low. I'm not going to, because the old me would have spazzed out. I would have gave y'all exactly what y'all wanted. I would have went on a big crazy rant, I would have just went, I would have, I would have, I would have smashed her, right? Cause she know, like, I know I have so much shit on her, but I would never do it, right? So I picked the phone, I called her, we spoke, definitely, but definitely, definitely banged it on her though. Like, where's this energy coming from? Like, that's, that's, if we're going to tell the truth, let's tell the truth. Like, the reason why you wasn't the main girl in the short like my video was because at the time, I felt like Sony was using me and my platform to blast off a new artist on the label and they were forcing her into the video, make her to, like, no, you, you, it don't work like that. I wanted, at the time, I wanted an individual, a certain individual to, to do that. Why? Because I knew the person and it was just the right thing to do, <coughs> right? So. That was that. I never picked her. I don't remember none of that stuff. And I'm sure if I said, yo, let's hang out, it wasn't on that type of time. Because for me, any girl that does a video with me, if you're my main girl, I'm always going to invite you somewhere or to something. Like, if it's dinner, if I'm going out to the club, like, just so we can build chemistry. It's okay. It's okay. You stopped it at the right point. That's where I was going to hear you. So back to what, what's her name? Keisha Shantae said. 
It's about what I like. He hazed me in the beginning. We were both signed to Sony Urban. Yeah. He saw my poster at, in the building in New York City, and he was like, I want this girl in my music video for mm -hmm. Shorty Like Mine. He was like, hey, I want to like invite you to yeah. be my lead girl. And I was like, oh my God, I would love to. So my team flew me out to LA. Mm -hmm. We had a whole team meeting. He showed up all like, what's up? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. no, oh, he was putting on. And then he asked me like, oh, you want to come by the hotel? Da, da, da. Yeah. And I'm like, no. The day of, I show up. Angela Simmons has a trailer. Keisha Chandy oh. has. Now go back to his response and rewind it to the end. What happens when you talk too motherfucking much? Smashed her. Okay, right there. There we go. If you're my main girl, I'm always going to invite you somewhere or to something. Like, if it's dinner, if I'm going out to the club, like, just so we can build chemistry. Why does your main girl got to build chemistry with you? Bow. Why? It, where in the contract does it state in order to be a main girl, she has to build chemistry with you, but when she says that exact thing, you coming out trying to say she's a lie, but then when she says it, it matches your story. You asked her if she wanted to come to the hotel. She said no. You said, okay, I'm going to get Angela Sim Simmons, somebody that I hit, a preacher's daughter. Cause let's not act how them preach. Let's not act like we don't know how them preachers' daughters be acting. And that's why she only mess with record labels and executives and drug dealers and shit like that. Angela Simmons. She wanted him. Just always wanted the bad guy. Last baby daddy. So go. Listen. That's what she likes. She's she's just craving for that roughneck. That is. She feel her daddy is too soft. She craves that 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 street something she didn't have coming up, but always wanted. So that's why she always ended up. But back to this at hand. Bow wow. Listen, everyone knows why y'all put these models in the video. But you thought you made the mistake thinking that this was a model. She was an artist. And for you to say I felt like Sony wanted to blast an artist uh, using my platform. Yeah, they do it all the time. They use other artists to break other artists. What is what is different about that? The problem is you couldn't break her. And that's where you got mad at. Jasmine said that was bars. I love her. She's like my biggest cheerleader. She's like that person in the crowd that be like, yes, 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 yes. Yes, Tasha. Teddy don't say shit no more. Look at him. He's just drunk. No. But you coming out thinking you clearing some shit up only to give validity to what she was saying. So basically, you wanted to fuck her. She said no. You put somebody else in the video that was just a little easy to fuck because she had something to prove to her daddy. Go, Keisha, go. Let me see what they talking about in the comments. I said, but I gotta learn to shut up. And you know what? Let me go back to this real quick. Cause T.I., me and T.I. got into it. This ain't the only interview that I did that didn't get dropped. <laughs> yeah. You forgot about the T.I. interview, didn't you? T.I. had interviewed me and called me out and was like, hey, I wanna interview you. And it was right around the time when all them allegations came out of, about him, right? And he called the queen as they always do. <laughs> And during that podcast, you know, it was him, his wife, it was Shekinah, it was me, my husband was in the back. And I asked him, I said, T, I said, you know why we sitting here today, right? He said, why? I said, because you opened your mouth. Well, they, they out here lying on my wife. So, you don't ever chase a lie. I know that you ain't, you ain't R, them girls. Look at me, look at you who got me saying R. And I'm a real bitch. I can't even say a damn word. I know you didn't take no pussy. That's a better term. I know, T.I., you didn't take no pussy because the text messages that I received from the videos you struck had your address and you had specific instructions. You said you only want girls that sold pussy and that was willing to take ecstasy. If they didn't want to take ecstasy or sell pussy, you did not want them. So that is a transaction. That is not taking pussy. Do you understand? There's a difference. So I knew what T.I. and Tiny was on. And I knew they wasn't with taking it because they didn't have to. Everybody wanted T.I. And he used them 
Because Tiny wanted them, but she was too ugly to get them. And then he asked me during the interview, why do I keep calling his wife ugly? And I looked at her. I said, why she ain't asked me? She just sat there high, high as a kite. She's just gone. Whew. Didn't say two words. Because I was like, girl, you know you don't want this smoke today, honey. I wish you would ask me why I call you ugly. You got to ask the whole world why they call you Miss Piggy. It's not just me. Don't do, your smoke is not with me. It's with the, doc, the, the branding that your doctor did on you that you paid for. We don't need that picture. We good. Jasmine about to bring the picture up. Mm -mm. But I just wanted to relay that to them. So it's the same thing about, like, when you associate yourself to the claims by responding, and I say this to anybody, that's when you give it validity. And that's when people want to go holler lawsuits. They want to get online to prove their innocence. And it's like, there's certain things that you could do to shut down shit, and it could be done and out. But it doesn't take you responding and lawsuits dragging on years because, you know, Sabrina was suing them over that stuff, and they suing Sabrina, and now a bunch of money is lost over evil goes and stuff like that we can just dead it with a piece of paper or you could just dead it by being silent my situation it could have been dead it with one piece of paper y'all still ain't got the paper moving on next <laughs> after the break okay hold right there okay we definitely have desi banks and million dollars worth of game we got akbar v and her husband they got some uh some some more issues going on i did talk to akbar in the dm she wasn't too happy with me but i told her i'm praying for her uh definitely gonna be discussing that 21 savage drake spilled some heavy wine on 21 savage definitely gonna be talking about beyonce and jay-z azalea banks naomi campbell tristan thompson and chloe okay along with the kim card with kim kardashian uh nene leaks is man married man was outside we got some pictures on that, okay? And last but not least, definitely got some exclusive information on Tamar Braxton and Jeremy. More info came out, okay? And we're all going to discuss that and more right after this break. So we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass to hold that thought. We will be right back after the great break. Like this video. Hey, check this out. Kids go home tomorrow. House finna be quiet as a bitch, man. So f it. Boosted badass is back, man. All go pool party. All go piss pool party. And I f mean it, man. This third. We finna turn up, man. F all that, man. I gotta enjoy my mother life, man. <laughs> Winos at the Flamingo Bar Theater. 
Grab your tickets. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. And seats are first come, first serve within your ticket tier. And if you think I cut up on this here internet, you ain't ready for the shit that's about to go down live on stage. Scan the QR code or get your tickets using the link below. The winos are toasting up in Miami. Purchase now. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. <laughs> now, put them ticket emojis in the chat if you got them tickets. I ain't had no wine in a minute, so I'm kind of lit right now. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of wine, I'm drinking the Apothic White. Hope, it, hope that you are enjoying the show on the Apothic White. It's got me quite lit, quite conscious, too. You know, some of this shit can put me out. I got 19 crimes over here I've been wanting to drink, but I got to do that on a night where I just don't give a fuck. Where I just don't give a, a, a E damn. You understand know what I'm saying? Don't forget, this wine, you can get it anywhere, okay? Any store, any gas station, $9, a pot that comes in uh, uh, various uh, varietals and things like that. And this is one of my actual favorites, okay, along with the pot that red. Um, and it's quite affordable, okay? It's an everyday wine, especially if you're not like a, a wine wine drinker. This kind of has some, some sweetness to it. I taste more pear on the tongue, okay? It doesn't leave you dry mouth and everything because there's some wines, white wines, that can leave you dry Like you don't smoke reefer. Like some of that stuff I had last night. Boy, I got so high last night. I did. It's medicinal. I get all my stuff from the dispensary. And I was high. This is the reason why I was asleep. Okay. <laughs> I, sl I, I slept till 8 o'clock because I didn't sleep last night. Because what happens is, you know, we magnifies wh what it is that you are. And I'm high strong, you know, paranoid all the damn time for no reason. Just always just got shit going on right and so i'm up three four o'clock in the morning just walking around cleaning and drinking water because my mouth was dry as hell <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there talking to myself i'm like you just it's just weed <laughs> you know you get too high when you got to tell yourself it's just weed that's all it is you're just tripping right now you're just tripping tasha and i was tripping and so i slept from four to six <laughs> and i had to go get my hat done <laughs> And I walked in, my eyes was like this, and Keisha was like, what the hell wrong with your eyes? I said, that nothing. So then I got my hair done, came back to the house and went to sleep, and that's why I was late for the show. It was just, I didn't expect it to be that strong. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of what Ed Sheeran, and I started panicking too, because you know, I was listening to an Ed Sheeran interview, and he said he got so high with uh, uh, Snoop Dogg, that he went blind. And so me, I think of stuff like this. It's like, because I don't like being out of control of my body. And so when I feel like I'm out of control of the weed done got me too high and shit like that, I start thinking, am I going to go blind? And then I start getting scared. <laughs> That's why I got to stop reading shit. You know what I'm saying? When you read too much, you be thinking that shit going to happen in that weed. It just be having my mind just process that shit. And I'm like, I'm about to go blind. <laughs> and I'm just cleaning this shit. Like, don't, 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 don't try that at home. Please don't. So. <laughs> But my brother taught me how to uh, combat it. He said, drink Casamigos. Drink some tequila because it helps to settle it down, especially if it gets you too hyper. You know what I'm saying? Heart be beating out your chest. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> the hell going on? Shaq kept waking up. What the fuck wrong with you? I said, nothing, baby. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Tell me I can't sleep. Your ass walking around the house. I can't. I'm sorry, baby. I just, <laughs> I'm scared to go to sleep. I'm scared I ain't going to wake up. <laughs> Let me see what they talking about in the comments. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. I know I be laughing at me too, man. I got some bad, bad, bad weed stories. <laughs> it's just the way I should stop smoking, and it just doesn't work, okay? It doesn't work. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Y'all better be laughing at me. That should be real, though. Check was like, God damn it, why are you up? <laughs> I got bleach wipes everywhere. <laughs> All right, Desi Banks. All right, now we know Desi Banks started on Instagram with us and, and YouTube and all that stuff, and now he is Hollywood. Congratulations to that brother, okay? 
bottoms up to Desi. But a lot of people had a few questions about his come up. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I guess million dollars worth of game, Wallow and Gilly, is that the names? Gang department? Is it Wallow and Gilly? Yep. Wallow and Gilly, okay. So, you know, the gang department wine, you know. Um they had some questions, and, uh, you know, I was surprised at how these answers went, you know, especially coming from the messengers, the questioners, okay? Y'all listen closely. Let's go. Yeah. Did Hollywood call you yet? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that. At the Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a Hollywood agency, you know what I'm saying? I'm, Let me I'm ask in that you a question, right? I can't say too much, but I'm going to say it. Has it ever been a time where it's though? Have you ever got a visitor? A visitor? Like somebody come to your house? Uh, how can I explain <laughs> this? Uh, when you're getting to certain levels and you're going up, somebody come see you. And want to come talk to you? Somebody come and see you and to help you go to the next, next, <laughs> next level. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know how you see, you might see somebody that's not that talented or not that funny or whatever, and all of a sudden they be all the way up here and you trying yeah. to figure out how that happened. It, now I'm going to rephrase this question. <laughs> Have anybody came to visit you? Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> Hell. I want to watch that one more time. It got real awkward in that room. Because everybody says that Desi Banks is not funny. Everybody say that. That, that just ain't got nothing to do with me, okay? Because I'm entering the comedy space and I don't want them talking about, oh, she's just hating on me and stuff. No, 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 no. It's what the, ultimately what the people say and what the tickets say, okay? And if the tickets ain't selling, then you ain't funny. If they selling, then you must be some type of funny, okay? Roll this one more time. Listen closely. Yeah. Did Hollywood call you yet? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that. At the Hollywood. You, that? you know what I'm saying? I, I got a Hollywood agency. You know? oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a part of that. Part of what? There's Illuminati. There's a child trafficking ring. There's a lot of stuff going on. Writer's strike. <laughs> you got to be more specific, Desi. Okay? Keep going. I'm saying, I'm, Let me I'm ask in you a question, right? I can't say too much, but I'm going to say it. Now, why he can't say too much? Because he just signed a contract himself. And he's leading people to believe that it was $100 million. But I don't believe that because that set is sitting in an apartment with old leather couches. But keep going. Has it ever been a time where it's due? Pause. And they share a hotel room. Him and Gillow and Wallow. Double beds. I was like, are y'all actually going to believe that these men, okay, that are sharing rooms at the Motel 6, going live, got a $100 million contract in Hollywood that was only four pages, and they keep going. Have you ever got a visitor? A visitor? Like somebody come to your house? Pause. Who, Megan? Who, Megan? When she was dancing, the white girl? Who? What visitor are we talking about? Keep going. Uh, how can I explain <laughs> this? Uh, yeah, how can you explain it? When you're getting to certain levels mm. and you're going up, somebody come see you. Yeah. <laughs> and want to come talk to you? Somebody come and see you and to help you go to the next, next, <laughs> next level. Pause. In that moment, he knew he fucked her. Let's go. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know how you see, you might see somebody that's not that talented or not that funny or whatever, and all of a sudden they be all the way up here and you trying yeah. to figure out how that happened. Pause. How he just dissed that man in his face on the podcast? You know how you see somebody that's not that funny, not that talented, and this man sat there and let them say that to his face. In that moment, the podcast would have been shut down. Let's go. It, now I'm going to rephrase this question. <laughs> Have anybody came to visit you? Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> Hell. Desi, the fact that you let them black men do that to you in this content. Now, here's what I'm going to say, because I'm team Desi on this. I really am. Because it, it, I, I think certain people shouldn't have certain conversations. Because, you know, I watch the, what do you call them, hip-hop blogs? Or do they hip-hop bloggers? You know, like the academics or the, you know, the 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 Hassan Campbell, those guys, you know, the no jumpers, and I watch them. You know, I scroll through. I don't sit there for a long time because it's like sitting on a porch with a bunch of niggas and watching football. I can't do that, right? I'm a woman. I gotta go in the house and cook. But I I scroll through and I see that they allow or led the public to believe Gillo and Wallow from Million Dollars Worth of Game to believe that they got a $100 million contract for a podcast that is very mediocre. 
Okay? They don't have any state-of-the-art podcast equipment. The furniture hasn't changed. It looks like they're going live from an apartment in Philly, out of the hood. And they led people to believe that they signed a $100 million contract on their kitchen counter in that apartment that they go live from. And it was only four pages. I said $100 million contracts aren't done like that. They're not four pages with two lines, okay? Now, they probably got signed to a talent agency, but I don't think they got $100 million. And that's just not the way you do it. And he's holding a bottle of tequila. We made it. <laughs> we made it. There wasn't no money on that contract. Now... For you to ask such a question and say, did somebody come see him? Now, I, here's what I don't like to go. I don't like to go here, but I have to. Because, see, when you play in people's face, see, that's why they don't call me on these podcasts. And that's why a lot of my podcasts ain't out, because they try to check me, but I'm the checker. You got to do your research on who you're talking to before you decide to sit down with certain people. And so if I were Desi Banks... Comedian to comedian. I got your back, brother. And they asked me if anybody came to see me. Huh? Oh, Jasmine had a little warning, so I was just like, huh? Did we get a call from somebody or something? Did the Illuminati call and tell me Tasha stand down? Did they call? If they would have asked me if anybody came to see me and I wasn't funny, and I got all these big movies in Hollywood, because you know that's what they do, I would have said, well, they can say the same thing for you. Because who came to see you? Which one was it, Gillo or Wallow? Gang department? Gillo. Because you was back to work quite quick after your son took off. Now, if anybody, if we're talking conspiracy theory, because you put this on the table, had we, you would have never said nothing. You would have kept your mouth closed and just kept your little four-page, $100 million contract to yourself instead of trying to embarrass a brother who we've been watching since Instagram started, grind, and ain't nobody turned up dead for him to get it. Now, if he had to get some ass up, that's a whole lot better than, you know, we can say a lot about you, brother. And I don't want to go there because children are off limits, but that was a grown man. And a lot of people would say that the Illuminati requires some sort of sacrifice. Okay? If y'all did get, assuming, a $100 million four-page contract that you cried about, Weeks before, you went to a funeral. Now, we wouldn't be talking about this had you would have just kept coughing in the video. Play it one more time. Yeah. Did Hollywood call you yet? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that. At the Hollywood, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a Hollywood agency. You know what I'm saying? I'm, Let me I'm ask in you that a loop. question, right? I can't say too much, but I'm going to say it. Has it ever been a time where it's though? Have you ever got a visitor? A visitor? Like somebody come to your house? <laughs> How can I explain this? Uh, when you're getting to certain levels and you're going up, somebody come see you. And want to come talk to you? Somebody come and see you and to help you go to the next, next, <laughs> next level. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know how you see, you might see somebody that's not that talented or not that funny or whatever, and all of a sudden they be all the way up here and you trying yeah. to figure out how that happened? It, now I'm going to rephrase this question. <laughs> Have anybody came to visit you? Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> Hell. Now who came to visit Gillo or Gilly? Gilly O or whatever his name is. Who came to visit you? Who? Now I don't believe in that. I don't. I'm just asking. Since you want to put it out on the table and try to embarrass somebody, I'm just asking what the people want to know. Who came to see you? about your baby but we're gonna move on and leave that right there and let god or the devil work that out or the illuminati to whom uh uh gave uh, uh that 100 million dollar contract to uh, contract for hire okay contract killer moving on 
Niggas, yeah, y'all need to learn to shut up sometime. This ain't gonna go your way. Akbar V, and I don't even know what this man name is. I don't. Don't care to know. All I know is, you know, Akbar, she wasn't too happy with my video that I did. You know, I, a lot of people aren't happy, but it's me. That's what makes me me, and I can't be anybody else with me. I'm not happy with her behavior online, you know, but am I telling her to back up and stop? I mean, yeah, I make suggestions, but at the end of the day, she's going to be her, and we have to respect each other as such. Okay, and so she hit my DM, and even though I already had it slated to, to, to I, I don't even know who this man, what this man's name is, okay? Somebody tell me in the comments, please, who this husband is, okay? Because um, she was online, um, and she claimed she wasn't crying about him, and uh, it, it kind of looked like she was crying about him, but she got, a, she got in my DM to tell me who she was really crying about. And I'm not going to disclose that, okay? Uh, but she is going through a very tough time, and you guys do need to pray for, you know what I'm saying? But not him. Don't pray for him, okay? So me and Akbar had a very grown woman conversation. I said, you know I stand for Akbar. There's a few women out here that I just stand for, and I stand for you. And, you know, some stuff don't need to be said on the Internet. And it, it can very give... Like, you know how Von Shea, Gunplay's uh, wife, still ain't seen no marriage documents, um, you know, put out that her baby has birth defects due to the dad's sperm from cocaine use or crack or ketamine or whatever it is, whatever it is you're using. And me, being the person who read as much as I read, because that's all I do is read, I said that gave crack baby. And so well, I was just like, you know, why would you get on the internet and tell everybody that you had a baby with a crackhead and it probably led to uh, having a crack baby? I would not put that information out. And she said, I didn't say, she got in my DM, I didn't say my baby was a crack baby. I said, but you did. That's why you got a vet. I'm guilty of it too. That's why you got to vet what it is that you say before you get out here and say it. Because me being the, the bitch that read that I am, all I heard was you got a crack baby and you're not happy about it. And so, you know, she got in my DM, and, you know, she said what she said, and I said what I said. I said, well, listen, listen, I'm not saying your baby's a crackhead or a crack baby. I'm saying that what you said, said, or gave us a hint that your baby was a crack baby. And now people are saying that, and that's the same thing with Akbar. Like, you got to, you got to put, when you emotional and you doing these videos, I should even be doing videos when I'm emotional. You know what I'm saying? When I'm emotional now, I just scream. I just scream. I just scream at somebody, okay? But I do not get online, especially that last time. I was like, oh, my God, who's that? Who's that? But everybody always want to say, she angry black woman. Nobody ever asked why I'm angry. Can I please just get somebody to say, baby, why are you angry? Because I'm black and I'm a woman. And when my period on, is hell for everybody. Anybody can get this smoke. And so you got to be careful with what you put online, especially during those emotional times as women, you know? And then I end up regretting it like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got that mad. Like, it wasn't even worth it, you know? And so she jumped in my DM and said that, you know, Tasha, it wasn't like that. I wasn't crying over him. I was crying over somebody else. And she told me who that was and what happened, okay? And so just, just keep her in your, in, in your prayers. But this nigga, Bean, she married a man named Bean. I wonder if that's on the marriage certificate. Bean. Okay. All right. Bean. Okay. Bean took to Instagram and said that he was looking for a divorce lawyer. Literally wrote it out. I didn't even bother to screenshot it because I didn't give a damn. But after she jumped in my DM to say, you know, she wasn't, you know, crying over him. It was over somebody else. And she going through a lot of stuff like that. And then me, I, I was like, you know what? I... I could hold this story, but I said, no, nah, it's not in me to do. It's not in me to do. Says he wanted to ask the world if we knew any divorce lawyers, and we don't even know this nigga name. I'm trying to figure out why are you asking us and you didn't even ask us, you know, you didn't ask us nothing about the marriage, like where you got married, or, 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 or you know, ask us, hey, I want to ask Aspard to marry me. Like, why are you asking for divorce lawyers? Like, you never asked us permission to marry her. Why are you asking us to help to divorce her? Like, I, I don't get what he's doing here. And I feel like he's used her 
and he's thinking this is working in his favor, and it's not. And so since he wants, you know, help with finding a divorce lawyer, I'm sure we got somebody here that can help Akbar to speed this up so this man can get out back out on the streets and sell bean pies. Pray for Akbar, please. Drake spilling wine on his latest album. We normally wouldn't comment on this, but since he's, you know, he was basically, you know, I guess a lot of people didn't catch it, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. So he just, I guess, released a new album, For the Dogs or something like that. I heard it's good. My daughter called me. She was like, Mom, it's really good. I was like, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. But then when I heard he was dropping bars on Rihanna, saying that Rihanna's, Vagina was average, and I was like, Drake, you can't talk about nobody vagina being average, and there's not one woman on the internet claiming you. And you're Drake. You're Drake! Normally women be like, I'm with Drake, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. Nobody is on the internet claiming you at all. It's not a flex. It's not a flex, okay? It was cute. You know, at one point, to want to put a body on Gumby, but it's not no more. Because he do look like Gumby. He just need to be painting blue. Green, he look just like him, head and all. Now, we talked about, you know, Lotto coming out of uh, the side bitch hole, and she's free now. She's no longer a side bitch. She get to be with her man in public. I don't think he's going to let it happen. I, I, I just don't see 21 Savage letting it happen because it was just it's more fun when it's secretive you know what i'm saying and so there's probably going to be another woman that he pops up with publicly but it won't ever be lotto it's just he it's just that's not the way married men work whether they fake married or not and so drake put out that he was fake married in so many words okay but we all kind of knew that but you know he couldn't fake marry someone and make it obvious because she could get upset one day and say come out and say we're fake married so he pretended to be married and kept lotto in the dark and kept buying her cars i told you only side bitches get cars that is not a flex okay when you're married, you go in the same account, <laughs> you buy a car. When you are in a relationship, you go in the same account. So there ain't no surprising, you know, your partner with a car because you see where the money is going when you're in a relationship, okay, because you got to budget them bills. Now, because she's excited. He this nigga put me in a Lambo. He put me in a Lambo. Yeah, see, that's side bitch energy. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do. You get excited about stuff like that. But his wife, you know, uh, recently came out and said she divorcing him. You know, and uh, 21 doesn't care because Drake just came out and said during the song, he finally got his green card. So go, bitch, go. And I know Lotto feel like it's her time to finally move in, but it's not going to work like that. The fact that he was able to do everything with you behind the scenes, what benefit is it for him to come out in front of the scenes with you? There's no value. His career is lucrative with or without you. There's really no flex. You're not helping him to bring value to his life. It's not a Beyonce and Jay-Z. It's not that. You're a rapper who released singles, one skittle at a time. But if you care, that's the reason why they got divorced or the wife is divorcing because her contract is up and she realized that she was being used and she will no longer be used. But since he's got his green card and he's allowed to stay in the country now, um, because the next step is permanent citizenship. He don't really need her at all, okay? There's no reneging once you get that green card. You free. So congratulations to 21 Savage. I hope the wife got some money out the deal because I would have rather knew up front. That way he could have just paid me. That would have been quiet. But he ain't want no receipts on file because that would have been another charge that he's fighting on top of the other charges. And he didn't want them kind of problems because he going to realize he going to need to be legal one day. And that would have really messed it up had he would have pissed off this dark skinned woman up here because she would have came and told me everything. And ISIS would have been in the chat. Immigration. Can you give us the footage? Now, I don't know about that. Uh, he ain't committed no crime here. Okay. No, I don't know. I don't know if I would have gave ISIS the footage. Ice. I said ISIS, Lord Jesus. Lord. Ice. The immigration. <laughs> Moving on. OK. 
Okay, so uh, people digging up old footage and trying to drag uh, Beyonce and Jay Z and you know about uh, just just random things, you know. And so this is the latest uh, piece of video footage that people thought, you know, the the sensitive culture, you know, because everybody's sensitive now, you know, um, thought that they would dig up out the archives and try to, you know, I don't know, somewhat cancel Jay Z and Beyonce in their forties and fifties. Um, let's roll this footage. This is nothing compared to what you've done. And not only me, but everybody here. You've taught me so many things. I was 20 years old when we first started dating. You taught me how to be a woman. You taught me how to live. You taught me how to be a friend. Um, you've given me so much in life. And this is it's not enough. It's not enough I can give you. I just want you to be happy. And every year, I'm even more in love with you. And I want to spend every day of my life with you. Happy birthday. And I thank God for you every day. So cute. I just wanted to cry. Well, I tell my husband. Now, Jay-Z, I believe, was 32 at the time. 32 or 33 when they met. And everybody's like, wait a minute, why why is she thanking him for teaching her how to be a woman? Last time I checked, your mama don't teach you how to ride dick or suck dick. I mean, there's some mothers that do that, like Carlissa, you know? But, you know, real mothers don't teach you how to do that kind of thing. So when she was saying, you taught me how to be a woman, you know, a young girl, you know, doing woman things that he didn't want from a grown woman because a grown woman wouldn't have wouldn't have taken all those hits that he allegedly hit while he was grooming Beyonce to be the money maker that she is now while he sit at every concert watching his chick across the stage. That's his retirement fund. I said, Jay, watching that chick. He don't let nobody get close up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He done did too much wrong. He got to watch that. So um, he know at times she get emotional. You know what I'm saying? Period come on. And she says she want to leave and stuff. But he, he has to remind her. You know, I taught you how to be a woman. Remember? It's Ike Turner. Um, but I just don't understand why everybody's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, why would she credit a man for teaching her how to be a woman? Because men... I mean, they, just like we show men how, you know, women show men how to be men. You know, I, I don't know where we get that from. You know what I'm saying? But that's the culture that we live in is that, you know, uh, there are some women who make men better and some men who make women better. But in Jay-Z's case, he was in the business of making children into women. And billionaires. Moving on. Azalea Banks is coming for Naomi Campbell. I don't know why all these celebrities is broke. They doing mayonnaise and applesauce commercials, okay? Uh, so I think, what is her name? Naomi Banks, after buying some light-skinned babies, some Arab babies, um, she is now forced to work for Pretty Little Thing, which is equal to Shein and Fashion Nova, okay? And so Azalea Banks recently took to Instagram to say, let me get her, because you know, is that your base? Well, she can read, okay? Um, she says that this was a downgrade. I'm grossed out. She said, uh, you know, for, I guess, you know, Naomi Campbell being presented by Pretty Little Things. Maybe she was paying. She got, she got how many kids? Two kids? When no baby father's around to raise, the girl has to make a check, okay? And so... Um, Look at the baddie twins talking about me while she raising chickens in her basement. Cats, not chickens, okay? Cats, the boy, baddie twins. Shout out to the baddie twins. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, I just don't understand why anybody is surprised. You know, Hollywood's on a strike and everything like that. And Naomi Campbell, you know, she can't come walk the runway like she used to because she got two children and she don't trust nobody with them because then they're going to find out where their daddies is at in a cup in Dubai. 
Okay. Um, and so she don't want nobody in her house. And so things that she got to do, she got to do from the comfort of her own home now. Um, and so if that requires her uploading a selfie uh, for Pretty Little Things to say, Pretty Little Things, ex uh, Naomi Campbell, um, one of our top, top models, uh, then she got to do what she got to do. Last time I checked, she's a single mother. And single mothers have got to do what they got to do, even if that includes selling a little pussy on the side. Okay, so go, Naomi Campbell, go. At least she ain't boiling no, no cats for no endorsement deals. Moving on. All right, now this is, this is fun. Let me get my chair. Gotta get my chair. Y'all better be hitting the wine glass. I hope you enjoying the show. Jasmine, what they talking about in the comments? They enjoying the show? They are? Y'all enjoying y'all fucking Friday? I hope so. We work hard on this content. Jasmine, come here early. Early, shout out to all 10,000 of y'all. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord. Can't wait to see y'all on October 20th. <laughs> they said we wouldn't sell out. Look at God. Look at God. You know, this is only going to get bigger. <laughs> I just love how people, like, you know, try to acclaim, try to put me in a box. And it's like, you don't know what this is. This is Jack in the Box. You never know what you're going to get. You understand? Put me in a box. It's going to be Jack in the Box. Before you know it, I'm going to pop out. You go, oh, my God. You know, so shout out to, you know, to I got on that and to the winos. Start a wino weekend, shutting down Miami, October 20th. Boy, we getting fucked up. Gonna get fucked out like, like, like uh, candy in a good way. <laughs> All right. I never thought in a million years I would be sitting up here taking up for Tristan Thompson. Thompson, I guess, yeah, Tristan. Uh, but unfortunately, that day has come. And there are reasons behind it. Okay, so hear me out. Hear me out. I know y'all have a soft spot for the Kardashians because you watch them grow up and get pimped out by their parents, okay? And so you feel some sort of, you know, you, you, you feel like, you know, you raise these girls, you know, and you, you want to see them win and stuff like that. But in this case, I just, I, I, I don't think there's any hope at all. So much so that Kim is now, you know, taking a liking to Tristan and is now doing interviews saying that Tristan is a good father because he's a father to her children like her children don't have a damn daddy. You know, she want everybody else but her own shit. And I, I just gotta, Kim is in a lot of people's business. But, you know, um, let's, let's watch. Is this the Kim Kardashian, her telling everybody he's a good father and stuff? Okay, cool. Go ahead. Uh uh, where is your relationship with Tristan? Oh, I know you guys are going to hate me for this and you're going to hate us and you're going to think Chloe's whatever. It's so crazy because he's such a good friend and he's such a good like dad, but he just couldn't get it together in that area of like being a faithful boyfriend. <laughs> so it's like you want to obviously hate him for that. Yeah, of course, his actions and who he was, like, so up. Like, I can't deny that. And we've had our talks about it, and we've had our fights about it, and we've had our arguments about it. But he's also shown so many decent things and just has been a really good person and friend. When he saw me struggling with my kids, he stepped up. He started showing up to the games. He picks Zane up, takes him to dinner, and will always come to my defense, especially if it's stuff with, like, me and my ex. And I just like never forgot that. See, and this is it's videos like this that make you want to jazz. As as a baby, if I was a baby mother, and this bitch sat her ass ass up there to fix her mouth, to say that this man, let me put this up. Is a great dad, and he got not one, but two baby mamas looking for his ass right now. Where's Marley? Where's she at? Point Marley is one, two, three, fourth from the bottom. This is Marley. Marley ain't seen this since she gave birth to this baby. She been having to chase him down through the courts for him to come see his own baby. A baby that he made out of love. Side bitch love. That's a different love. But he sent Chloe down there to the sperm bank with his sperm in a cup 
and tell him to put it in another woman to make the baby. And meanwhile, he had this woman that he could have just brought to Chloe to say, here, we got this baby. We ain't got to pay for it. It was for free. And then you got the black baby mom, the mama down here, Jordy. She, she trying to maintain her brand awareness that her sister, like the sister that Kim is supposed to be for Chloe, but instead she pandering to her man and taking her man on dates and they going to restaurants and they going to basketball games like they a couple because he done stepped up to be a father to her kids but not his own kids. Let's read what Jordy's sister got to say to Black Baby Mama. Let me pull this up. Hold on for a second. Because I'm talking about the best. Come on. Woo! Woo! Kim! See what I'm talking about? I can't do this with her. I cannot do this with her. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whew. Hold on, I got it, Jasmine. I got it. I got it. I got my thoughts together. Now, the sister of Tristan Thompson's baby mama, Jordan, okay, this is Jordan, the black one, uh, calls him out for being a deadbeat to his son, Prince, after Kim praised him for being a good father. It's so painful to see how Tristan can find time to do nice things for others, but can't seem to show up and be a real parent for my nephew, Prince, okay? Now, Jordy, the reason Jordy ain't saying nothing is because she the cute sister. She she don't talk on her Instagram. She just truly show clothes. She trying to, you know, Lori Harvey is trying to take her style. She's the real Lori Harvey, and Lori, Lori Harvey's a knockoff when it comes to this, okay? Lori Harvey got to get with, with, with men to keep her brand going. She doesn't. Okay. Now the sister came out and said, it's been so hard to refrain from speaking up and out of respect for my sister's privacy. I have it for over seven years. Now, you know, Jordy just recently took him back to court because he was trying to get his child support payments lower. She said, no, 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 no. If you can buy a house across the street from the baby mama that you didn't want, and that's why you bought a surrogate and went to have a baby with someone else. So it's clear that you didn't want Chloe at all. The only thing that wants Chloe is weight. You can pay this here 40000 that you've been paying, especially if you can afford to live across the street from your baby mama and carry her bills and my bills too. Your baby bills need to be due. The only person that ain't getting paid right now is Marley. The last time I checked, okay? She asked for 20000 She's still in the courts fighting. She going to get it. Mm-hmm. Now, she said I haven't for over the past seven years, but this is just too much. It's painful. It's too painful to see how Trisha can find the time to do nice things for others, but can't seem to show up and be a real parent for my nephew Prince. The fact that he can take other children to school and activities in the same city, yet never sees or speaks to his own son unless it's a party or plan photo opportunity is appalling and inexcusable. Now, at Kim Kardashian, I don't want to believe that you are this insensitive to the fact that he literally ignores his children and she didn't put this part and your sister okay now that's nice if he's been a good friend to you but let's let's consider our sisters before taking a global platform to defend this man's character i love when black folks enter the chat with a fish sandwich with mustard and onions and white bread mm-hmm and they got fish falling out their mouth as they talking shit. Yeah. On another note, to set the record straight, the child support rumors are inaccurate. Trisha has not paid that child support in a very long time and has stopped paying Prince's school tuition. Yet he's being applauded for picking up and dropping off other kids to school activities. He hasn't even inquired where Prince goes to school now. Despite it all, my sister continues to work multiple jobs, and she has, she has since he... Uh, she was 16 years old, so that Prince will never uh, have to feel different. Okay, a difference. Okay. But regardless, stepping up for your son is not all about money. It's about the time spent at the real Tristan 3. You are not a good father. I like how she put that Maury Povich. You are not a good father. Uh, if you can be a, fa a good father to all your children, and I wholeheartedly believe that, and Kim just wants a man and feels... Kim reminds me of them girls that, you know, she likes to become best friends with your man, and so he'll tell you everything about, you know, you and, the you know, you, the, the person, her friend in the relationship, and then she eats that up and presents herself like she's, she's the perfect woman, but I can't be with you. It kind of boosts her ego. Everybody knows a bitch like that. We're just friends. And he's not that bad. I mean, I spend time with him because he ain't cheating on you. 
He ain't dogging you out. You ain't on antibiotics trying to cure BV or trichinomas every other week from all the bitches he raw dogging in clubs. Kim don't know nothing about that, okay? All the men she goes after end up in mental hospitals. I don't even think they know that they're with her. I don't even think they know that they're married because they're on Prozac or Ritalin or some type of medication. I don't think they were the only person that remembers is Ray J. Now, um, that's what Kim strikes me as, you know. She kind of boosts her ego to, to be that perfect woman that everybody wants, but don't nobody want her. Yeah. Now, Trisha. Now, here's where I come to his defense, okay? Roll this footage. Why, why do certain things to hurt certain people? I think the thing that always sticks to my mind, it's like, I know how much I care about you. I, I know how much I love you. You're my best friend. How come I, like, I meet my person? How come I've done so much wrong things to them? Like, why, 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 why put you through that? Tristan has said before, like, I'm his person. I'm not saying I don't believe him, but I've heard this. And of course it's angered me before because I'm like, well, if I am, then why would you have treated me this way? And you've done them more than most human could ever do. So I, I it's, but it shows how like pure and great your soul is and how much you just don't want no bad energy. You want everyone to just be happy and be in a good place. And, you I know, do. obviously you do it for our children as well. No, she don't. No, she don't. Mm -mm. She just, that's karma. You gave her the karma that she gave. Every other woman's, you know, man she was sleeping with, allegedly. Okay? That's, that shit don't feel good, do it? Mm -mm. I know it doesn't, Chloe. And here's what I'm going to say. That boy was young when she got with him. It was a power play. This is a Kardashian. She's got a, one of the biggest empires on television, okay? To be with her amps up his career. Let's be honest, Trisha would just be an average basketball player if it wasn't for Chloe. And now that she has this power play over him and she's presented herself as this perfect damsel in distress that didn't deserve to be done like this, but she knowingly went after a child the same way Keisha Cole does. Because they feel that they could manipulate them, but when the child does child things... And you can't figure it out. And now you want to blame the child for doing things that they're supposed to do in their 20s, which is cheat. He's not married to you. You decided to be a baby mama before you got married. You knew better. Now you got this man thinking that he actually did somebody wrong that was perfect in his eyes, but the entire world saw you being imperfect with other people's men's when they was in relationships. Now, the only reason he's sitting around saying that you're my person is because you're making him believe that he actually did something wrong when, in fact, he did what he was supposed to do. You got money. You're rich. You're somewhat handsome, minus some thick hips and thick thighs. That come from all the oxtails and curry chicken and curry goat eating. You are supposed to fuck around in your 20s, but she was in her 30s. And so it's all mind control, making him feel guilty. Like the read, he's never going to find anybody as good as her. But that's a lie. That's a lie. And I would ask Tristan if he watches this video. Now, although, and, and I want to say this too before I, 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 I end that. Anybody that truly, truly cares about you, Tristan, would not condone you being a deadbeat father to any of your children. The fact that she allows you to still live in a house and then you buy a house across the street and then you're on her show, you're getting paid to be on her show. It's not free. I know that. He's getting a check for that. So I would probably be there too if the basketball checks is dried up and then Jordy coming for this 40000 I would let the show pay for it, okay? But I just don't understand. Why are you keeping him there? Why you won't let him go? Why you won't release him? The man, listen, Tristan was supposed to do what he was supposed to do. But I just want to say this. Like, the longer you 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 keep him there, the worse things are going to get for you because you're not going to be able to move on. You're just holding him there because it's good content. But let's be honest. The only reason you making him feel bad is because no man wanted you before him and even with him 
or after him. But if you truly cared about him, you would tell him, listen, be a daddy to all your kids. Let me see you do that. But because you, you vindictive, so vindictive that you didn't even want to connect to the son that you bought at all, didn't even want to bring him home because there was a bitch out there that he made a love baby with and you wanted that baby instead. But you didn't want your body to go through that because the Olympic said no. Let me... Let the boy go. Just let him go. Trisha, you ain't did nothing. No other man done done or ain't done in they damn 20s. And she finna take you down mentally the same way they done took every other man down there mentally. And when you leave, your ass gonna be on medication. And before you know it, you're gonna be trying to figure out where your motherfucking money went, where your house went. Get your ass from down there, Trisha. Get your ass from down there. Moving on. I got a soft spot for that little boy. Oh, we got we got oh, okay. All right, now, after this, we got two more topics, okay? And then we're going to end this. Uh, we've been on here two hours. Remember, there's no TashaKLive.com tonight. I got an early flight in the morning, very, very early flight. And so we'll return to our regular scheduling program uh, uh, on Monday, okay? And we got some juicy-ass wine for happy hour. Oh, my God, this done got messy, okay? It done got real messy. Remember there was a girl that called in? and said that she was pregnant, and she had a 52-year-old sugar daddy that was white, but she ended up getting pregnant by a YouTuber, and the YouTuber was somewhat of a famous YouTuber or something like that, but he really wasn't famous, okay? But she said there was another content creator that he was messing with. Well, that content creator came to do an interview, and I got to tell you, it's horrible. It, it's horrible. So much so that the YouTuber boy that done got these, these women pregnant not want to do an interview, but he want to wait to see. It's just happy hour of civilian wine. Y'all got to be here for this civilian wine now. Because it's, it's better than the, the celebrity gossip, okay? So y'all make sure y'all be there Monday for that. And don't forget, we just released, okay, the Olsen Dario's inter, uh, interview. It was live, okay? If you missed that, you need to watch that. Then we got Xavier Howard's Baby Mama on TashaKLive.com. We got a lot of stuff y'all need to catch up on, okay, before we start rolling out new interviews next week, all right? So just bear with me. I got a flight in the morning. I would, I would definitely stay and give you a second show, but I can't. But I gave y'all a lot of content this week, all right? But when with that being said, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means Bowley Razor Glass, who will be right back. Hold that thought. We got Tamar and Nene, and then we're going to close it out. Let's go. Hey, check this out. Kids go home tomorrow. House finna be quiet as a bitch, man. So, f it. Boosty badass is back. All gold pool party. All gold piss pool party. And I mean it, man. This third. We finna turn up, man. F all that, man. I gotta enjoy my mother life, man. All gold piss pool party. I'm about to be all up in the gold piss party. Y'all better hurry up and get y'all tickets. Pictures of your piss, and it better be dark. It better be cold, man. Piss pool party at Boosie Estate. Invites only, man. Invites only. Hit my DM, man. All gold piss pool party. Fuck it. I ain't drinking water all week, man. Only lady crown roll. I'm looking for the baddest with the darkest golden pit. And you know I ain't got but one kid. Get y'all tickets before Thursday. I already did boosty my piss. It's dark as hell. I'm coming for you hoes. I'm coming for the $500. All gold piss pool party. Boosty bad ass. Chlorine or urine? We gonna have a vote. All gold in your fight. I got my waist trainer on. I'm doing my kegels, but when it's time for me to piss on you hoes, I'm pissing on all you hoes. All go piss pool party. Skits like this plus a lot more wine spill live with me on Wine with Tasha K on stage in Miami on October 20th. 
2023 at 8 p.m. But I better see the winos at the Flamingo Bar Theater. Grab your tickets. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. And seats are first come, first served within your ticket tier. And if you think I cut up on this here internet, you ain't ready for the shit that's about to go down live on stage. Scan the QR code or get your tickets using the link below. The winos are toasting up in Miami. Purchase now. Let's put the wine down for a second because at times like this, we need to take a shot of the olive leaf extract because the olive leaf boosts our immune system and has been known to reverse high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, and certain cancers. Check them out at myoliveleaf.biz to learn more and to order or simply click the link below in the description box. Now back to the wine. Ticket emojis up if you got tickets to wine on weekend. We got like 40 left, okay? Hurry up and get them before we close it down. Because like I said, I'm leaving the other 40 for friends and family. But we had to open up all the tickets in case y'all wanted to come. And, you know, family ain't got no money. They always taking money. So I put y'all first. You know what I'm saying? But listen, since we, you know, two weeks away, make sure you get them tickets. Put them ticket emojis up. I can't wait. Wine gossip comedy weekend. Oh, we getting lit. Oh, we getting lit. We getting lit, okay? Can't wait to see y'all. All right, now. Uh, Nene Leaks. That's what happens when you cl don't close your legs to married men. They use you, spin up all your, your, your insurance money that you got from your husband, and then they be outside. At midnight, with with their preference. Where's the where's the picture? You look closely now. Look closely. Okay, so that's that's Yoni, right? That's the head. Keep going, Jasmine. And that's his preference. Uh huh. The winos be on it. Let me see who. I forgot the little girl that sent me these, but let me go and give her a little shout out. I said I was going to give her a shout out. Give me a second. Hold on. Hold on. Y'all just marinate on that real quick, okay? Just marinate on that. Diary of a Millennial Nurse is her name, okay? So you can find her at nurse underscore Tori underscore Elaine, E-L-L-A-I-N-N-E. Okay, underscore, Diary of a Millennial Nurse. Shout out to her for these pictures, okay? Because we wonder why Nene all of a sudden has had such an epiphany. And you in a lawsuit right now. Could you imagine being in a lawsuit with a man's wife that he just now divorced and you're still fighting a lawsuit and have to pay for him being a piece of shit man and helping him to leave his wife? alienation of affection and then this is who he out with his preference <laughs> i would be upset i'm paying legal fees for my husband's uh uh, uh life insurance policy i, I can't I, you can't make this nene nene Please tell me he paying a legal fee. He can't afford them. He got a PPP loan right when he met you. That man ain't had no money, okay? You moved him, let, let him meet your kids and all types of shit, and this is who he meeting at midnight. That's not a client. That's not an image consulting uh, consultation. Don't look like it. And what you doing sitting on your bed? Like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And your hands don't match your face. Look him. Let me see what they talking about in the comments. What is over? Oh. Jesus, too much, too much. Play it again. They said play it again. Let me play it again. Play it one more time. Just wrong one, Jasmine. <laughs> that was his date. That was his date at midnight. And you could tell, too, she knew somebody was recording her because she was looking over at the camera like she knew. Bet you Nene didn't know that now. And she younger than Nene. Yeah, and you know Nene almost 60. This one here, we don't know. She's young, light-skinned, natural hair. Yeah,
right, moving on, moving on. Now, listen, Jasmine found, listen, I got to shout out to Jasmine because I got the whole team finding wine now, okay? And so, um, you know, we, you know, everybody been trying to put two and two together to see why, you know, JR left Germany. Uh, I said Germany. Jeremy left Tamar, and, you know, he came out and said he wanted to focus on positive energy, um, and, you know, and we all knew Tamar was negative. That's why a lot of people got rid of her and stuff like that. And uh, Tamar came out and said, well, he wasn't there for me when my car got broken into, but you, y'all was already broken up because you was living with your mama when the car bro- got broken into. Um, and so we we, we kind of knew where this was going, you know. And um, I got to tell you, there was a YouTuber the other night. Her name is Mother Nature. Yeah. And nature is spelled N-A-T-E-U-R. Okay, so we definitely going to shout out and support our other YouTubers for spilling wine. Now, I want you to have a little patience for this video, okay? Because it's going to open up a lot of shit that we, 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 we didn't think about before, okay? Now, this particular YouTuber um, has a con- uh, 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 some sort of a relationship with Jeremy, but she spilled a lot while she was frying fish. And I, I want you to be patient watching the video because she's going to tell us exactly what we need to hear. Okay? Listen up. Let's go. Am I still with my fiance? You guys, speaking of fiancés, have y'all been, yes, have y'all been catching up or uh, with the whole like Tamar and her fiance? Tamar and her fiance, uh, JR? Have y'all been keeping up with that? I should put salt on this. You guys. I I have something I want to share. I wasn't going to post a video about it. I'm not going to post a video about it. So, like I was saying, wait, what did you say, Empress? They broke up, um, but they both can't. Okay, listen. I used to be JR's nanny. You guys. <laughs> I have been wanting to say something about this so bad. But I'm not going to post a video about it. I'm not going to post a video about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to come live. And if I remember to talk about it, I'll talk about it. But yes, I used to be the kid's nanny. When I was, you guys, all I can say is, well, first of all, I found out about it watching, uh, or not watching. I got a, I got a notification from Kempire on YouTube. I think it's K-E-M-P-I-R-E, Kempire, like Empire, Kempire. Anyway, um, I saw the notification and immediately I was like, what are they talking about? Because I already knew that they were together. He told me about them being together way back, I was with him in like 2021. You guys, my fish is burning. Oh man, I already burnt my fish. You guys, (laughs) hold on. See, hold on. First of all, let me, because we got to get into it, okay? I haven't heard everything about what's going on with him or her or all that stuff. But everything that I have heard is true about him. Everything. Um, It's so much, it's so... I, so much to say. I'm trying to cook and drink at the same time. But, so yeah, so basically, this is what's hilarious. <clears throat> so when I started working with him, um, the littlest, the baby was a couple months old. Um, he reached out to me and told me that he needed someone like every other weekend. Um, he told me that he had his kids every other weekend. And right away, I'm like, if you only have your kids every other weekend, you're not going to spend like those two days with them. You're going out every night doing all this stuff and, you know, whatever. To each their own. But I was like, okay, it, it, it's a job. Let me see how this is going to work. Um, so when I get to his house and he opens the door, I immediately knew who he was because we matched on Bumble three times, you guys. <laughs> Listen, we ch- <laughs> I was standing there like, what the fuck is going on? We chatted on Bumble a few times. Y'all, I'm burning my fish. Listen, 
Um, wait, what did you say? Back to my fiance. No, no, no. We're still together. But you guys, <laughs> listen, this is why I wanted, I was like, I want to post a video, but I, I, I'm not going to post a video because I don't want to be like in the midst of all this shit. All right. So right away, it's awkward, but I can't say anything. <laughs> I can't say anything. I'm just going along with the flow. But anyway, so like I was saying, it was awkward as fuck in there because I'm like, I know this dude didn't just hire me to come over to help with his five kids when we matched on Bumble three times. <laughs> so I am just going with the flow. So I want to say maybe an hour or two after I got there, he left. Didn't say anything about knowing me or anything like that. And I didn't say anything. I know they were. Um, so I was fish there too, right? every other weekend, yeah. and at some point, I cannot remember how the conversation started. I know I didn't ask, but he volunteered the information about being with Tamar. Anyway, so he volunteered information about, like, yeah, I just started dating this reality celebrity, blah, 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 blah. And right away, I'm interested because one, I'm like, you have a newborn. I think that you should take a pause on dating. <laughs> like, <laughs> you should take a break. And then I wanted to know, like, you know, what was happening because I'm like, this dude really does not recognize me. Like, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, so he says this and he says that. And um, then he mentions getting a, 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 a new house, a bigger house. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to move into a bigger house. And he told me what his budget was and all of that stuff. And um, he he said that he needed a bigger house for his kids. But I'm like, you only have them every other weekend. If you need more space for your kids, I totally get that. But when he told me he was dating Tamar, I was like, I wonder if he's trying to like impress her or, you know, make it seem like he's got more than what he's got. And he was doing well for himself before they got together. Um, so I can't really say that he wasn't trying to come up. I have no idea. I, I can't say any of that. But um, yeah, one of them, and it was kind of like awkward. Um, she wanted to see me. I was the nanny. She wanted to meet me and I get that. But I felt like it was awkwardness between them two. And I'm just like, I don't want to be in the midst of it. I don't know if she thought that he was trying to hook up with me because he does like all of his kids are mixed. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Little did she know, like we matched on Bumble three times. So maybe she, <laughs> maybe she was picking up on my vibe because I was like, girl, do you know? But you know, whatever. Anyway, it's it's super super crazy. That was a lie. Even though she was frying the fish, I just thought it was real cute while she was trying to fry, fry fish and it would have irritated y'all to make y'all wait for that why. But the fact that the man is on a dating website, the fact that the man came on a dating show and got five different black baby, baby mamas and couldn't find one of them to keep the house that he got to hire a black nanny that was on a dating website that he matched and had conversations with, you ask me, I think he's looking for a mama. And Tamar just, you know, she... Um, I mean, she gives me a lot of energy, but mama energy? Mm, that's why she only got one child. Yeah. He do eat too much. Yeah. That's a lot of groceries. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought that was interesting. How you got somebody over there watching the kids and you, you, you was on a dating website. I'm like, Tamar, where are you? Like, you are a public figure. Why are you on dating shows? And this man who's supposedly uh, a, a big time lawyer is on, like, why is he on dating apps? I mean, lawyers don't have to look for pussy. So I'm inclined to believe her that he was trying to make it seem like he had more than what he had, but I think most of his money going to child support. And this reiterates what I said. He's a personal injury attorney. They need clout. It's expensive to market themselves the way that Morgan and Morgan and them do, like when they, they market with us and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. So why not link yourself with somebody that's 
clout chasing that's desperate, that's in need of a man to act like he's black, but appear. Don't get me started. You know, he can be black in all ways, but one, God didn't give him that part. And it just, it, like I said, it just reiterates that he was, it was a clout chase. But the problem was he, he just didn't have, you know, having five kids by five different black baby mamas and this was not your baby mama and she gave you more negative energy than all five of your baby mamas, you would rather just be broke and alone. With hella child support. I don't know what the fuck she saw in him. I really don't. Any man that wear a striped pin suit in Atlanta, he's scamming her. Allegedly. Now I gotta go. Thank y'all so much for watching. I cannot wait to see y'all October 20th. Why gossiping comedy? I'm sorry that I'm not going live on TashaGayLive.com. I have an early flight in the morning. It is business related and it has a lot to do with our October 20th. Why gossiping comedy show? And we will return on Monday spilling wine, okay? A lot of wine. Civilian wine as well as celebrity gossip. But in the meantime, Head on over to TashaKLive.com to get that Xavier Howard wine with the baby mama, the wine that she spilt on that man, as well as the Olsen Dario brothers, okay? The brothers that assisted Jesse Smollett, allegedly, because he, you know, maintains his innocence and said he didn't do it. Um, help him to plan that hoax. And okay, and they gave us a lot of information on their background. They gave us information on Lee Daniels, them going to the bathhouses, the relationship between. It was a lot of wine being spilled in that. And what I like most about that interview with the Osendaria brothers is that they're not dumb like people present them to be, you know. I I I I I got a lot. I mean, they're highly educated, you know, they're not like the rough neck black men that we're used to. They're really essentially nerds they really are you know they're not you know they don't have swag but they're just smart they work out you know they're not bad looking you know and i i saw that in the chat when i saw winos masturbating during the interview i said y'all nasty y'all just nasty okay but be sure to get over there to TashaKLive.com, okay, to get that wine. I love y'all so much. I'm going to head on out. Like I said, I got an early flight in the morning, and I'll see y'all Monday. Also, if you have tips on your favorite celebrities, please feel free to continue to hit me in the DM, okay, at Unwind with Tasha K, or just send me an email to unwindwithtashak at gmail.com. If you have questions that you want read during happy hour that we're going to do on Monday, okay, please feel free to send us an email via unwindwithtashak at gmail.com. Don't forget to like this video, okay? Okay, if you want to advertise on the platform, please feel free to send us an email via ads, ads at TashaKLive.com. Thank you so much to Teddy. Thank you to Jazzy. Thank you to the entire team. Thank you all to y'all. Don't, don't believe any of the lies that's out there. <laughs> cap. <laughs> cap, cap, cap. That's all I'm going to say. Cap. <laughs> Nine.